one main thing that we're talking about on a one hand or back end is the take back. We'll see often professionals have their take back quite far back here. You can see how much I rotated. This is me facing the net here. And now this is where often pros will be. Now you can see that I'm having a tough time seeing the ball from the other side or in front of me when it's bouncing because the ball is bouncing and then coming to me to my contact. Now, general public is not super flexible. So what, the more we turn, the less we can see forward, we can see the ball less. We're often watching the ball only with one eye because you've turned so much. So create the turn as much as it feels comfortable, even if it's only to here, completely fine. As long as you can see the ball bouncing in front of you, clearly with both eyes. That initial unit turn happens with the shoulders and we start to move for that backhand. When we complete the setup, that's when the swing happens. During contact, my racket, my wrist is relaxed. We don't want to create power using the wrist because it hurts and it's really difficult to control a ball and where it's going to go if we engage the wrist. The wrist, however, does relax. It can help with spinning the ball upwards. If the wrist is completely tight, you will find yourself having a tough time creating topspin because then you're using your arm to create topspin. Sure, you can, however, there's not as much racket speed you can create, not as much topspin, you'll find the ball flying either too far or not high enough. Because less spin, ball flies further. So keeping this relaxed is key. On a, on a, on a two-hander backhand, you would have a lot of support with your left arm. So even a contact back here can be okay, because you can have this arm to help you get power or stability. If I'm doing the same thing with a one-hand or backhand, there's no room here. You can see I'd have to do this to, to get that ball over the net, and that puts a ton of pressure on my arm. There's just no stability. So contact point has to be in front of you. So it takes more precision in the movement. It's a more difficult shot than a two-hander backhand, generally speaking. So if you're completely just starting out right now, I would go with two hands all day long, baby. Okay, now one hand is different. One hand takes more precision to move. And contact point, I can't say it enough how contact point has to be out front, further forward. Now you'll see that players, if they do recognize early that the ball is going to pass them, they just don't have enough time to get there and be behind the ball, they will start to slice the ball more because a slice can be closer to your body, you're absorbing the speed of the shot and you can get away with that. My beginning of my backhand and the take back is usually where things go wrong. People set up late, they create less time for themselves or they don't create enough time for themselves and then all of a sudden they're contacting it late. So when that ball leaves the opponent's racket, when they're contacting the ball, I'm up in the air. I'm split stepping, I'm now ready to go left, right, wherever I need to move. When they've made contact, and I notice they're going to my left, my backhand. So I'm going from that landing spot, I'm going to the left, with my chest immediately, also with my feet immediately. Both are moving. Be careful of starting to move with the racket still in front of you. There's no point. It's just a habit that those people have and they've created. So as soon as I start moving, I like to think of it like you've got to point your shoulder towards the ball. So you're here, turn your shoulder. I'm turning my right shoulder right away towards the ball. And now look at what my racket's doing. Where is my racket? It's almost ready for hitting. Almost ready. It could be, actually. So from here, I can turn sideways and I am ready to right away go if the ball is really fast. Now, from that setup, right away, as soon as my chest goes, now I'm ready to go. And I can move forward, the ball comes shorter, I'm turning and I can go backwards, or I can go towards you, 
and then hit that backhand. What matters on the movement is that that ball stays in front of me for that whole stability out there. Here I'm weak, there I'm strong. Now often players do not react quickly enough for a ball that's flying short or landing short and therefore they end up having to reach for the ball this way. And look what that does to my balance and my entire body weight is going forward. When we're falling forward, our tendency will be to hit more up. We have to hit up because the ball is going over the net. So instead of feeling like you're bending forward from your waist going this way, think of that backhand that's slow, a little bit more like a lunge. I need to keep my upper body as straight up as I can. The straighter my upper body, the more I will be able to hit the ball upwards. You can see that my feet are quite stationary here and stable through my entire shot and I keep my back foot there. That's really just because I am triggering the movement from a ball bounced here. If I'm hitting full speed, the ball will come to me and I will land to recover. Yeah, so I'm moving and I recover. Moving in and recovering. Now you can see how that back foot moves as a result of my upper body creating more power and more speed. It does not move with the racket. I am not rotating through my backhand. Like we talked about in one of the other videos on a two on our backhand, you would do this, where the left shoulder and the left chest, the left part of the body is really swinging fully through. In this case, on a one-hander backhand, it's your front shoulder hitting. 